All right, you on. All right, so we're gonna go into the fill identifiers. Now this is for your own purpose. All right, this is for your own purpose right here. So being that this is for your own purpose, understand what we're gonna be talking about is fill identifiers. This is to help you know the information and have everything that you need, all right? So um, the fill identifiers are placeholders for data that you will supply to customize um, the documents list in the process overview below for your own use. For illustration, you have provided sample documents with field data for the fictitious person, all right? Which is your name in all caps, the straw man, straw person, um, the strongest homo, all right? Um, the dummy, the allegiance, the artificial corporation, the artificial person, colorable person, all right? All these are various terms from out of Black's Law Dictionary, Bouvier Law Dictionary, in which that shows us the debtor. So the following information and format will be used to complete the documents. You're responsible for the adapting this data to suit your particular circumstances. And the data here is for example purposes only. All right, so as you see here, we have the birth certificate registration number, which is the state file number in the upper right hand corner. All right, you have the birthday. All right, you have the county, the day number, or the date. You have the debtor's address, a PO box number. You have the debtor's city, all caps, country, all caps, USA. You have the debtor's name in all caps. You have the debtor's state, abbreviated MD. You have the debtor's zip code. You have the exemption ID number, which is your social security number without the dashes. You have the month name, in other words, the month in which that she was conceived in. And of course, we know that all this is fictitious down to um, the dates, down to the year down to um down to the months all right we know the word oc o-c-t which is the root for october means 10. what month is october That's the, 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 uh, the fiscal year. Um, right, that's the fiscal year for the government ending for financial economic sessions. All right, if you're going to do a 1099 OID, it would be during the time of October, the end of October to March. All right to the end of near the end of March, in between that cycle. All right, but Ak, as we know, even though it's the tenth, is told it is told us the tenth month, but Ak um, means eight. Yes, in the German language. Right, in the German language, Ak means. So, how did it become the tenth month? Because Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar, the two Caesars, added themselves or 
got added in after their death by the people of Rome to become part of the calendar in which that we now have Ak, which is eight, to now become the 10th month instead of the eighth month. And Julius Caesar, July, and Augustus Caesar, August, take up two of those placements, which moves Ak from eight to now to 10. So this is a problem with the calendar dates, number one, just as it is with the year. They're going to start a year with a fictitious character called Jesus. And then don't know the month or don't know the year that he was born. Because <laughs> some say it was 4 BC. Some say it was 7 AD. You'll have different examples of that. So obviously it wasn't based on the actual birthday of Jesus because allegedly um, he would have been born somewhere around September, allegedly, instead of the winter month of December during the time of the pagan deity all right, or pagan deities or netters. And the word pagan simply means people, people's traditions of the Kemetic, Temerian, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian people of or saw as he transformed from consciousness into subconsciousness from the Lord of the conscious world to the lord of the subconscious or underworld December the 25th but of course we know prior to that December the 21st we have the winter solstice all right The recording has started. So we have the winter solstice. And so we're looking at made up things in which that we're operating on. And the whole purpose of understanding a lot of this is to begin to start using your mind and the correct dates and put their information in parentheses as if it don't exist or in brackets, as it don't exist, because this, what I just told you, doesn't exist. This is some made up shit. So when you say that you born October, what does that mean? <laughs> because they have it as the 10th month. But yet, Ak is eight. <laughs> Just like December is deck, which is 10. But it's the 12th month. November, no, which is the 11th month as they have it, but yet is really the what? The ninth month. Ninth month, yeah. Right. Eight, ninth, and 10th month is October, November, and December. So this is what they have done is a disservice to the mind state, um, stat, uh, status, the mind state. All right, so let's look. Salutations, Mr., Mrs., Miss. Of course, um, our royal titles is El, Bay, Day, Il, or Ali. All right. Secure party address in care of, and you will not abbreviate in care of. You will write in care of all the way out if you're going to be the secure party. You will not use any abbreviations. Right? Secure so you won't use the C slash O. Right. You will not use the you C. Use that. Okay. Right. You will want to use in care of, written all the way out. I know what it says here, but I'm telling you. Um, it is best to stay away from abbreviations 
unless you're dealing with the name in all caps. Then you can write abbreviations all you want. All right? Then you can write abbreviations all you want. But if you're dealing with secure party creditor, which is up in low case, which is your natural person, your indigenous self, then you will not use abbreviations. Otherwise, that is a trick in grammar in which that leads you back towards the name in all caps, which is the straw person, straw man. All right, you have the secure party city, Baltimore, as you see, Baltimore is di written differently than Baltimore up top, which is in all caps. And really, you can, um, you know, you see here, Baltimore is written in up in lowcase. You see, um, the country is United States of America, written all the way out, and then the United is in lowercase. Why? Because in the preamble, all right, um, of the Constitution, that's the way that is spelled. And of course, there's four constitutions. You have the Articles of Association, passed in 1774. You have the Declaration of Independence, passed 1776. You have the Articles of Confederation, passed 1781, 82. And you have um, the Constitution for the United States of America, passed 1789. And I think fully ratified by 1791. Okay? So, um, you have secure party name, wrong. Once again, you cannot be the grantor and the grantee at the same time. This is why I'm giving you all the basis of this information by doing it from the redemption manual, um, point four, um, four point five. However, um, this is incorrect. This is why you do a common law name correction and you do your nationality. Your declaration of status is to give you an indigenous appellation. All right. Then you have the state, Maryland State, which is good because that's different than MD. And you can put Maryland Republic or the Republic of Maryland. All right. Or the state republic, Maryland. As you see the zip code in brackets, social security number, um, state name, all right? Last name of the treasury, um, secretary, full name of the treasury secretary, unique identifiers, non-actionable, Year spelled out, 2000 and of course, 17. Um, year number, 2017. So let's look at the process overview. Collect all indicia of adhesion contracts, license, permits, etc. These will be listed in box four of your UCC financing statement, aka UCC-1. Your birth certificate registration number, also your bond number, your library card number, social security number, vehicle license number, your VIN number for your automobile, fish and game license, your marriage license number, your passport numbers, professional license number, accountant, contractor, doctor, engineer, minister, and any other license or permits is what you would add down in the collateral listing of the UCC1 financing statement. All right, no, even if you've been living in a cave for most of your life, you have just popped out and discovered redemption, you are still you can still become a secure party, all right? Box four on the UCC would then reference only the four primary documents, your biological property. The only property that you will have in this case is secured in the secured agreement. The purpose for filling in this case can be to pre-exempt the potential liability for becoming ensnared in the matrix. You are deer in the headlights and you will 
most likely be eventually captured since you certificate the chargeback process could not be completed. So this is why you utilize the information coming from your birth certificate, all right, the state file number, the bond number, and put that in a collateral listing. And once you go and put that at the register of D's as a non-UCC filing, it now becomes liened. You now have the superior claim of lien. Then you take it to the Secretary of State, or you can get online and go to the UCC services section of the Secretary of State of your particular state and put that information in. And now, instead of a non-UCC non filing, you will now check box bail, bail, um, bail, um, bail Bailey, Baylor, Bailey, um, seller, buyer, agricultural lien, and et cetera. All those boxes will be checked now, or X marks the spot, as they say, instead of the non UCC filing. And now that would give a notice of claim of lien at the Secretary of State. So you want to be able to do both of those, register of these and at the Secretary of State. Now, if you have not separated yourself from your indicia of adhesive contracts, license, permits, et cetera, by loss, theft, or fire, then you can be placed on a UCC-3. Then they can be placed on a UCC-3 at a later time, including any other contract numbers from license or permits, et cetera, by completing a UCC financing statement amendment, aka UCC-3. See details at the end of this section of the manual. Now, documents, references in the UCC financing statement, UCC-1, you will have the secure agreement, security agreement, power of attorney, common law copyright, hold harmless and indemnity agreement or clause, you have your UCC financing statement, all right? You have your documents used in the chargeback process. You will have your cover letter to Secretary of Treasury. And who is the Secretary of Treasury now, everybody? That's it. Come, say it again. That's right. Right, right. Get, there you go. Get the strange name going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have the bill of exchange letter format for birth certificate, and you have the birth certificate accepted for value, which is the accepted for value stamp, which I've shown before in class, which we will show again, will be um, at a 45 degree angle stamped on the front and the back of the birth certificate. Okay. You also have the true and correct copy of the UCC financing statement and the 1040 NR, non-residential, all right? The reason why Benjamin um, Freedom Franklin, his name is in all caps, he's the debtor, and then his name is in upper and lower case, once again, as the secure party creditor, which once again, you cannot be the grantor and the grantee at the same time has to do a 1040 ES because he's still a goddamn citizen of the United States. All right? Every, um, somebody look up a 1040 ES and read for me what an ES is. Let's look that up right quick. And then look up a 1040 NR and read for me what a NR is. Let's look that up. Whoever gets it first. All right, so you would notice that there are sample forms filled out in the name of Benjamin Freedom Franklin, up in lowercase. Read and review the forms. You got it? All right, following the form is a generic copy of the form. It is not suggested um, the one copy any of the forms out of the book. Fill in the blanks with the pen as it reduces the professional appearance of the form. 
The blank forms are on the CD to pull up on your computer to, computer to input your information to prepare the forms for your process filing on computer or having the forms copied whereby you can use a typewriter if it is or you have. See the data information on each document, the secured or the security ag agreement in principle should be done first, signed and notarized as it is the first agreement between you, your debt, your debtor and you. All right. So now if the data is an artificial person, and when you go to Black's Law Dictionary, 7th edition, and it reads that distinguished from artificial person is natural person, and you read in the 7th edition that natural person is, i.e., indigenous, <laughs> then this is the reason why the European, Albion, has to try to operate under fraud as the same name, uppercase, all caps, and up and lowercase. While you have the right, because you're not a citizen of the United States Corporation, to change your name at any given time, for you are indigenous, aboriginal, Achatong. All right? Therefore, you have the right to establish for your name based on the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People coming from the United Nations, signed by more than 144 countries originally in 2007, 10 years ago. You have that right. All right? So. Right, the footer in all your documents look like the following. It can, it doesn't have to. The information in which that is on your documentation when you get it from us specifically um, details everything. Um, some of this stuff is, is an overkill um, in which that is being spoken of here, in which that makes the process a little bit more difficult. When you're trying to read it, you have to go back and look at this part. This part becomes so detailed, which detail is fine, but on the documentation, you have the information there in which that would state who you are, your social security number, front and back, birth certificate, state file number, and bond number. All right, those are the most important numbers in which that is needed on your documentation. Therefore, the footer, the header and the footer um, is not necessary. All right. Um, at times, you can use it if you choose to. That's your prerogative, but it's optional. It's not something in which that is necessary. The same information is going to pass through the Secretary of Treasury. All right. And after 30 days, you'll be able to discharge. So here we have one of seven affidavits, and this one is called Affidavit in Support of Discharge. All right. This is an example. Item number 102509-1, ASDBFF, all right? What is ASD? Oh, it's Affidavit Support Discharge, or Affidavit in Support of the Discharge, ASD. So if you, and where the number come from? They made it up. All right, they made it up. Mm. So the item number can be the date you create the document for simplicity, see? The dash one is the document in sequence, if any, i.e. one, two, three, four, five, as we're created, where they may be multiple documents per any particular matter. So see, if you were so detailed, you would be actually trying to find a number to put there when simplicity would told you, oh, you can put the date, 102509, <laughs> October the 25th, 2009, <laughs> dash 
one, which is the first page <laughs> or the first oh. document. You see? So, see, this is the thing in which that <clears throat> people don't have to get caught up in. Get the gist of the information, which is the most important element, is the gist of the information. The only exception in the style of the footer of the security agreement. Sample indication within this section and the footer appears on the CD file, obviously. You can change it any way if you wish. Now, as to notarizing, no. In document, the required notarizing, understanding that you have to go to the Secretary Commission Office, Officer Notary of the State for notarizing, who is only to acknowledge, validate your signature. It is not their function to analyze or give legal opinion as to your documents or whatever you are notarizing. And they have a habit of doing that. Oh, I can't sign that. Why not? You only authorize it, um, you only authorized in order to acknowledge the signature anyway. Well, as we say, I autograph. But as per your signature block of where you're signed before a notary, it is best to only sign where the SPC is to sign and then have the notary notarized thereon. Then later print your um, debtor's name in the space above where you signed. All right? That's because they have to do that because you can't be, once again, the grantor and the grantee at the same time. All right? This is the phallus in which that. Um, this is why you can use information, but go back and analyze what is really going on. You must have a nationality. Well, what that? Okay. You must have a nationality. You must have status before you even go into commerce. You must make the necessary corrections. Otherwise, once again, you cannot be the grantor or grantee at the same time. This is, a, this is the problem which I hear all these people who supposedly be doing secure party creditor information um, on YouTube. And they all got it wrong. Yeah. If they're not doing the way in which that we, if they're not doing it the way in which that we um, are talking about, then they wrong. Because David Smith can't be David oh, Smith. Yeah. He, can't, he can't grant to himself. They will not allow that at the register of deeds. So that means you would never get a, a lot of them are not nationalized. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Lee. Yes. Dr. Lee. Yes. Uh, in Alabama here, I uh, filed as a as a Moor. Uh, I nationalized. Right, but did you still me okay, saying that uh, at the debtor and the uh, that was when I, I tried to uh, file my UCC at the debtor and the, uh, the secure party creditor was one of the things, even though I had my uh, forged name. Okay, did you did you did you do a common law name correction or did you have a name change? Uh, I didn't do a common law name. Uh, I didn't do either one of them. Well, how did you have your um, indigenous appellation then used as well, the secure well, party creditor? I uh, I nationalized with Circle Seven number one. Uh huh. Uh, that did a, that's when I did a name change. Okay, so you did Not, a, so you did a name change though. Uh huh. I that means change. you that means you went down to the court. I, I did. I put it. I put it with the uh, uh, was it with the county? I recorded it. The name change. Right. Right. But still, they it seemed like this. When I tried to do this, they sent back this uh, uh, this checklist of why they did disapproved. They didn't accept my UCC one. Right. Now, this is Alabama. The first one was that is secure property creditor appeared to be the same entity. Okay, uh, so uh, let, let me. Okay, let me. Let's let's get this straight for everybody. You had the debtor. Who's the straw man? What name was that? Okay, that was. Uh, Nicole Hawkins. Okay, and in all caps, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, what was the private side creditor secure party name, i.e., your indigenous appellation? 
What name was in that box? Your code to date bait. Okay. Now, did you put Yaku Sedate Bay on the public record as far as getting a name change? Yes, I, I submitted it with the county. Okay. So that's the reason why. Because here in North Carolina and elsewhere, we try to do a common law name correction. We don't go to we don't go through the court system. We simply go to um, the clerk and under religious protection, we have the right to utilize our names because that's based on the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, United Nations, where it states that you have the right to your um to the um your indigenous name um based on your community and based on your nation. Okay. Okay. So we don't go through the process of allowing the judge to determine if we can allow if we are allowed to utilize that name or not. So right, I didn't, I didn't do that either. Okay. So how so how did they know that that then how did they know that um that Yaku was um the name in all caps? Well I, I put it on there in all caps. Uh in the in the first block. Right, I understand, but how did but how did they know that when they wrote you that apparently they're one and the same person? How how did they know that? They don't know. They don't know that. Right, but the only but, thing it, it could possibly know is the address. Oh, okay. So see, we 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 recommended early that you have a PO box. Okay. So the debtor will have a PO box, and the secure party creditor will have a um, a location. Preferably, the location would be in brackets. So, if you have, um, let's say, it was on one thirty one State Street, the one thirty one would be in brackets or in parentheses, and then the zip code or postal zone would be in parentheses or brackets. So. It would show a difference. That's how I mail my letters now. Right, right. So the uh, so the the debtor name will have a post box listed. So let's say PO box one thirty one would be his address. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, I do need to, I do need to go forward and get a get a post box for the debtor. You can do it for the debtor, or you can actually, I've seen some do it actually for the indigenous appellation. I've seen them reverse it. Right, I've seen them, right, I seen them reverse it. So you can actually do and keep, um, let's say, 131 State Street in all caps for your birth name, government name, which is the debtor. All right, and then you can do the post office box for your indigenous appellation. That way okay. you you that way um there's no address attached to the indigenous appellation in that regard, except for a post office box. Okay. Okay. Well, my paperwork, it, it has it has uh, uh it has my uh, street address here. So I I'll get the post office box for the uh debtor. Right. <coughs> um uh, let's see, it's it. Alabama is, is, is kind of, it's, I'll go to your, uh, it says also to check Alabama does not indent debtor's name short only paid a fiction, fiction name, fictional name. <laughs> right, but but they trying to say that your um, name in all caps isn't fiction, but that's a lie. <laughs> okay, exactly. And then check this out, it, it got about several more, say the record appeals appears fraudulent on its face. Okay, and then it says the debtor does not appear to meet the definition of a transmitted utilities. And it says social security numbers are not in the body of the UCC one file in Alabama. All well, well, if you, you do not want to put the whole social. social security number on the document, you only put the last four digits. And I did. Okay. okay. I, this is what they checked. Right. Uh, also, it says uh, there's certain words that you can use instead of social security number. You can say QCIP number, C-U-S-I-P, QCIP number. 
and just put the four um, last digits. C-U-S-I-P, right? C-U-S-I-P, Q-SIP number. Okay, and auto twin, auto twin. Uh, auto tris, this, right. This is the one that, this is the one that uh, uh, they, don't che they don't have a check, but it says the birth certificate is not included in the collateral. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits the owning of yeah, it does. However, that's what they do. <laughs> exactly. Right. So exactly. Um, it has one they know very well that that um, the president who sits in the leader and commander as of the free world, all right, he is the head of the United States Corporation. All right. So that means they made everyone a corporate citizen. All right. Which is, and they gave us, and they gave us the privilege of becoming corporate citizen, hence second class citizenship. In other words, they would still have the ability in order to dictate policy to you in every shape, form, and fashion. All right, because we are minors, hence minority. And the word minority means in Black's Law Dictionary, infantile, immature. Okay. Okay. So that's why they refer to us as the minority, even though we are the majority on the planet, outnumbering, outnumbering them 18 to 1. Okay. 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 This is very helpful. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, how it is this year in Alabama. Uh, I was thinking about filing in, in Washington, the state of Washington. You can do that. You can go to the Secretary of State also of Alabama. You can get online, go to UCC Services at the um, Secretary of State Alabama, mm -hmm. and do your um, and do your notice of lien through there. Now, if okay. you try, mm -hmm. now if you're just trying to do a blanket financial statement at the Register of Deeds. Um, then you would just simply follow the instructions in which that they um, have stated and make those necessary um, corrections and leave some information out and just simply put certain words like QCIP number, auto trist number, um, um, prepaid levy number, you know, um, employee's ID number. So instead of the word like social security, instead of saying words like birth certificate number, all those things you don't even have to say. And you can still get okay. the exact same results. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I there's always you. more than one way to skin a cat. Okay, okay. And I, like I said, when I get ready to file a UCC1, I will be in contact. As a matter of fact, you did suggest that I send it to you before I, I filed it. Yeah, that's fine. I can look it, up, look it over. Okay, appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. All right, did anybody um, pull up the um, information yet? That I asked about. Shoot, like almost, I guess almost uh, 40 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not bad at computer, so. Right. What was the information? I missed it. I, I was late for class. I, I apologize. Oh, I was asking, um, what was that I was asking about, Brother L? You remember? I remember I was you asking. About the 10, the 10, right, 10 the 1090, right, the 10 night on um, the 1040. And look up, let's look what ES means and let's look up the 1040 NR and what do NR mean. So anybody got that? Thank you, brother. Oh. Yes, the ES. Mm-hmm. Um, use form 1040 ES to figure and pay your estimated tax. For, uh, for year 2017 or whichever year. It says estimated tax is the method used to pay on income tax, on income that is not subject to withholding, for example, earnings from self-employment, interest, dividends, rent, alimony, etc. In addition, if you do not elect voluntary withholding, you should make an estimate, an estimate tax payment on other taxable income such as unemployment compensation and and taxable part of your social security benefits. Okay, so a 
1040 ES means estimate taxes. Estimate how much taxes you gonna give us today. <laughs> it's April the 15th and you better have it in before then. Oh, well, maybe we'll extend it a little bit more. We'll extend it for three or four more days. But by April the 20th, you better have my money. <laughs> okay, what about the 1040 NR? Um, the one I put up says 1040 ES uh, in parentheses NR. Mm. That's U.S. estimated tax for non-resident alien individuals. Okay, it just used to be a 1040 NR. Okay, so now they got the estimated okay, taxes yeah. for the non-residential individual. Okay. <laughs> um, it says perfect. Uh, the purpose for this package, if you are non-resident aliens, use this package to figure and pay your estimated tax for 2017. Hold, 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 hold up. I got to say this. So I noticed that. The IRS call, when you're paying them their money, they call it packages. Make sure you fill this package out properly so I can get my money. <laughs> but, like the mafia to me. Yeah, but, but I hear moors all the time saying, all these moors around here selling these packages. They yeah, sure do. But yet, I only, I only hear them talking about the IRS and their damn packages, which they admit are packages. <laughs> Read that again for me. <laughs> right. is, yeah. Purpose of this package. Package. If you are a non-resident alien. Use this package, package. To, it to pay your estimated tax for 2017. See who must makes who must make estimated tax payments to determine if you're required to use this package. Package. Estimated tax is the method used to pay tax on income that is not subject to withholding. See 2016 instructions for NR, for 1040NR, U.S. non-resident, new U.S. non-resident alien income tax return, or form the 1040NR EZ. All right, so U.S. income tax return for certain non-resident individuals with no dependents and uh, details for income tax that's taxable. All right, so they do have still a 1040NR non-residential alien form. So we want to find that. Let's see if we can find that one. And read that one. Cause see, they still trying to get you to uh, uh, fill out this package, <laughs> for you can pay them with my right. money. With my money, you know what's going on, baby. With my money, yeah, honey. You better get my money. Get my money before Pimp Daddy come down and pimp you out. You better go get my money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> the IRS got a damn 1970 pimp game. Why don't they talk about them? All right, anybody, uh, um, please find that, uh, try to find the 1040 NR. Notice how hard the 1040 NR is, is hard to find nowadays. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. Well, the 1040 NR is for a non resident. Right. So, Dr. Lane, mm -hmm. um, so when you're, um, so like um, the coupon you get from your utilities and this and that. Right. Uh, I was listening to Jane Cheating, mm -hmm. which is a kind of old um, um, recording that he did on, uh, what's that, uh, Horseshoe or Angela, what it called, Shoe Talk or something. Right, on Shoe Talk, said, like, Talk Shoe. Coupon, mm -hmm. You should turn them into a money order, right? And put pay to the uh, U.S. Treasury, right? Uh, make your use your uh, exemption and send them to the IRS. But he said you also have to uh, assess the tax using a ten forty, right? So would you use a ten forty 
ES when you're doing that? Like, say, if you did it for if you have a foreign, a if you have a if you have a foreign ninety eight series number, then you are a ten forty NR, which is a non residential alien. And you would do a W8 or W8BEN. All right. Um, so okay. you're not in their jurisdiction in any shape, form, or fashion. So, yes, you would fill it out just like you would, um, um, uh, what is called that bereave on portion, you would tear it off, which is a check, actually. And you would fill it out just like it's a check or a money order or, um, you know, and fill it out just and endorse it just, just like you would. But remember the numbers in which that you would have to put, of course, it would have to be the routing number, the prepay levy bond number, which is the back of Social Security card, the number without the dashes on the front of Social Security card, all right? Also, the birth certificate state file number, and if you want, you can also add the bond number. So you would be able to add these particular numbers onto that, all right? So that they would know exactly where to um, pull the funds from. All right, so that's what we do know. So the, right here it says, sorry. right, the PO box. Go ahead, brother L. We got PO box. That means you're out of their jurisdiction? That means that um, you don't have a address formally that they can conduct and come and do a search or any of those types of things because it's a post office box. And okay. the post office box in which that you would want is something like a post office box in which like if you would go to a UPS store, um, you know, wouldn't necessarily be at the USPS, which is United States Postal Service, but like at a UPS store, United Postal Service store, um, which is um, the, the little brown um, truck, the brown truck, the brown little brown um, men, uh, um, gr men's suits coming out, <laughs> or, or, or short pants coming out. <laughs> I hate, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so, so, so you would want to um, have um, one of that, you know, something like that. Either go to FedEx Kinko's and get a post office box, somewhere like one of those types of um, places, not necessarily the U.S. Postal Service. All right. So here we said secured a security agreement is the first document that must be filled out, notarized before proceeding with the rest of the process because it is the authority or basis for becoming the secure party creditor. It is the agreement that transfers the security interest and personal property be, um, between the private or uh, probably, excuse me, side debtor, straw man, and the private side creditor secure party. The security interest is normally perfected either by the creditor taking possession of the collateral or by filling or filing financing statements in the proper public records. Once security agreements is perfected, file first in the um, time, first in line. You as creditor has first priority right of possession and lien. All right, the UCC one or three establishes superior security interests and lien. Remember, that's what we've been telling you. Bad replacement title in the property as support by your security agreement. Since all property has been pledged to the state and owned by the international bankers, it now has been redeemed after the filings, UCC 1 and 3s. All right, so read that about, the, about that. Let's come on down. All right, for the security agreement, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all bases, the same identifiers on which that you will have taken for um, the first portion of this. Of course, you have the date, notarize, the month, um, notarize the year, notarize 
Social Security, all right? Um, secure party name, the debtor's name, address, city, state, Social Security number. I mean, a Social Security number, it would be um, your QCIP number, all right? Or your employee's identification number or prepaid levy bond number, which is on the back. Or IMF number, International Monetary Fund number, all right? And so forth and so on. Print the name of your debtor in all cap letters and sign the name in up and lowercase using the format of secure party name. Both signatures must be in blue ink. They will not take red ink. All right, red ink is for your documents such as your nationality, showing that you're flesh and living blood sentient being. Uh, yeah. Right, notarize your original and then make four to five color copies. Place the original or two copies in a safe place, but take one of those, make four or five black and white copies of which of these in the margin area below the black signature. Draw a line and sign on the line in blue ink. These are true and correct copies to be used as exhibits and or mailed out as necessary. Put the new schedule A and filing the um, portion out. After reading it, use common sense in filing or filling in the blanks. Security agreement is as follows, non-negotiable. Security agreement is made an entrance on the 10 time between um, Benjamin Franklin, Freedom Franklin, in all caps, the debtor, herein after debtor, secure, um, social security account number 101-88-1776, and Mustafa Bey. <laughs> secure party creditor, herein after secure party creditor, if any part or portion of this security agreement is found to be invalid or unenforceable, such parts or portions shall be void. Any other part or portion is reasonably segregatable from said parts <laughs> and portions. The parties herein after parties are identified as follows. Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Freedom Franklin, artificial corporation or corporate entity person, um, P.O. Box, as you see here, P.O. Box on uh, 177.6, as I was telling you, you can do it like this. Um, Baltimore, Maryland, MD, abbreviated, UCC trust account, social security number, um, with the dashes. All right, now the UCC trust account number will not just be the social security number, it will also be the register mail tab number, in which that you would send off your documents in. But for briefness, that's what is here. Then you have the secure party creditor, you have Benjamin Franklin on Freedom Franklin and all up in lowercase, as we know, that is Mustafa Bay now, all right? Cause you will have to have your nationality to do this process properly. A um, personum sojourn of one of the people of the posterity, all right? Or in our case, we just simply say um, American based on the original definition, indigenous, aboriginal or natural person, all right? In care of, like we said, would be written all the way out. And of course, they got 1776 Redemption Road, all right, or whatever the case is, is all up in lowercase. And as you see, United States of America is written all the way out in which that United is lowercase, all lowercase states and of America is up in lowercase. Now, therefore, the parties agree as follow. Right, or state in America or up in low case. America um, 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 agreement in consideration for the uh, secure, secure party providing certain um, accommodations to debtor inter alia to secure party debtor who deems himself herself um, insoluble or solvent um, hereby under necessity grants the above secure party creditor a security interest in the collateral described herein. <coughs> oh, excuse me. On any Schedule A's and may appear on all UCC filings appearing as collateral to secure all debtors' property as well as so called income from whatever source derived, direct, indirect, absolute, or contingent. 
do or to become due. Hearing after arising, held in any account with his due interest, parole or express public indebtedness and liabilities held by debtor or present or presented to debtors to security or secured party in consideration for secure party providing certain things in accommodation for debtor, including, but not limited to, let's see what he's talking about, original um, origin um, sub substance and being, i.e. basis of pre-existing claims from which the existence of debtor was derived and on the basis of which debtor is able to function as a transmitting utility. So see, a debtor can be a transmitting utility to conduct commercial activity as can do it for the transmissions of goods and services to the secure party and to interact, contract, and exchange goods, services, obligations, and liabilities with other debtors, corporations, artificial persons, and commerce. By accommodation what? for debtors in all cases whatsoever, wherein signature of debtor is required. Issuing a binding commitment to extend credit or the extension of immediate available credit, whether or not drawn upon or whether or not a charge back to provide for an event of difficulties in collection. Providing the security for payment of all sum due or owing or to become due or owing by a debtor and constituting the the assets via the sentient existence, exercise of faculties and labor of the secure party that provides the viable consideration significant to support any contract which debtor may execute or to you to which debtor may be regarded as bond bound by any person whatsoever. Debtor hereby confirms that this security agreement is duly executed, signed, and sealed private contract, all right, entering into knowingly, intentionally, and voluntarily by debtor and secure party, wherein and whereby debtor. So this is the thing. You're trying to pass yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You Listen, you're trying to find, you're trying to, you're trying to take everything in which that belongs to the debtor and transfer it to your name in up and low case, your indigenous appellation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that you can now control that. All right, now some people on the UCC put their name, uh, which is the indigenous appellation, in all caps. And that way, um, that corporation can deal with that corporation, which is your original name, in all caps, which is your birth name or government name, as we would say, in all caps. Then on the UCC one addendum or the UCC addendum in the additional security, um, security, um, secure party box, they will put their name in up and lower case. All right, so I've seen it done in that way. Voluntarily enter debtor in the commercial registry, registry, transferring the signs to the secure party, a security interest in the collateral described herein below and agrees to be act and function in law and commerce as the unincorporated, all right, priority type, um, priori, um, priority um, trademark of the secure party for exclusion and um, discretionary use by the secure party in any manner that the secure party by sovereign or unalienable, or unalienable right elects. All right, public lawful notice filed of, of um, filing of this security agreement by the parties constitute open lawful public notice that the law venue jurisdiction of this secure party, excuse me, of this security agreement is the ratified, finalized, signed, and sealed private contracts freely entered and between debtor and secure party as registered herewith. So see, this is the reason why, if you notice from everything that I'm reading to you, the problem is, is that once again, you cannot be the grantor and the grantee at the same time, all right? That's the problem.
You cannot be the grantor and the granny at the same time. All right. Property cannot own property. Right now in your Negro, black and colored state or African-American state, you are property. Because you have not put anything in writing. Maxims of law state specifically that your truth must be expressed in a form of an affidavit. Right? It must be expressed in the form of an affidavit. All right? That's the only way in which that your truth can be expressed is in a form of an affidavit. Maxims of law, the 10 maxims of law. Therefore, if it's not in a form of an affidavit, the court does not have to hear it. It can't be entered into as an exhibit. All right? It has to be in the form of an affidavit. All right? Your truth must be in the form of an affidavit. So all these moors going around talking about that you don't need um, no nationality documents, or you don't need to uh, buy that package or whatever they want to say, then that's the problem is because you have to have some paper trail. You have to have a paper trail. You better get your papers. You got to have your papers. All right? That's just, right. Say, brother Al. You got to have some kind of documentation to say who you are, you know, and the county recorder records for deeds and vital statistics and court record documents that have to be recorded, you know, that have, you know, in order to, you know, when you say, you can say you are more, you can say your name is Mustafa Hill, but if you don't have no kind of documentation to back that up, you know, therefore... Then you still Leroy Jones. Mind. Then you are still Leroy Jones. Well, that's right. You ain't got no paper trail. You still Leroy Jones. I don't care how much you damn pose as a more. Okay. Just that simple. Now, I'm fighting myself a ticket for new driver's license. I put my uh, my name, my driver's name on it. I uh, submitted. Uh, Reservation for right, reserve my rights under uh, 1 308 slash uh, 1 07. Also, a right to travel. And since we went to the court, I did submit uh, a legal name change or my uh, uh, indigenous uh, paperwork. It came back denied. So is, is that one of the reasons you came back denied? What you mean by that, brother Yaku? Yeah, what I, what I what happened is I did renew my my license and I put uh, uh, affidavit, right to travel. I re reserve my rights. Right. And uh, I got it. I when my, my driver's license uh, expired, I didn't do it. Right. Well, you so what? See, you can't you can't allow your driver's license to just expire. What you have to do if you're trying to do the right to travel is surrender your driver's license in good standing. Okay. Say so that again now. Surrender the driver's license. What? Yes. Okay, yes. I didn't hear you. Surrender yes. 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 You will have to surrender. Hold on. Yeah. Right. You cannot allow. Listen. Listen. You cannot allow your driver's license to expire. You will have to surrender your driver's license in good standing, so that the DMV can give you a letter of surrenderance. Okay, with I with didn't know that. yes, with that letter of surrenderance, then you attach that to your right to travel documents. All right? That way, that's proof that you have given up your driver's license in good standing, that you no longer need them. And that will put within the database of the DMV and tell the police officers that you have done so in good standing and therefore you owe them nothing and they have no jurisdiction over you whatsoever except to issue a warning ticket. Okay. In other words, in their database, all right. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be at in the database listed 
where you are essentially outside their jurisdiction in that regard because what gives them jurisdiction is the driver's license. Now, exactly. now what happened was is that you also need to have sent out certified mail return receipt to get that green receipt back. You need to have sent to all the various agencies. You should suppose they have sent a, um, a copy of your surrenderance letter and your right to travel documents along with a legal constructive notice to the police station, to the state highway patrol, to um, the sheriff department, to the DMV, as well as also to the Department of Transportation. You can also send a copy to a mayor and to the governor. All right? This will show that you are in good standing. Not only did you surrender your license at the DMV, but also send out legal constructive notice, put it everyone on notice that you have re-invoked your right to travel. Okay. And that the DMV was operating in fraud from the beginning because they practiced child molestation. Because you was probably 14, 15, 16 years old, which is you're not even 18 or 21 at that time. So that means that they, they are they are actually trans on um, this transaction with a minor okay. okay which is a violation okay that is a felony if you was trying to solicit to a, a child 14 15 16 years old you would have a felony Exactly. But, the, but the DMV can do that to 14, 15, 16 year olds. No problem. Okay, so how do I correct that now? The same way. Not going to get a license. All right, well, you need to still send out your legal constructive notices, putting all those agencies on notice so we, that you. The DMV, Highway Department, the governor, and the mayor. Well, you missed some. The, the right. police department, the sheriff department, the state That's highway the patrol, sheriff. right, the state highway patrol, the highway, highway department, the state highway, right, the um, DMV, and the Department of Transportation, along with the mayor, as well as, um, as, well as also um, the governor. governor. Yes. Okay. Okay, so still send it out. Yes. Agencies. And uh, I'd like to And if you and, and and you got a um if you got a court case and you already got a ticket, you need to um send in certified mail return receipt, a constructive legal um notice, um a special appearance or restricted appearance as they call it. Um a notice of restricted restricted or special appearance, and you also want to send in a countersuit. And constructive notes of special appearance. Right. It's called restricted or special appearance. Okay. And you also want to send in a countersuit. They suing you because that's what a ticket is. It's a suit. The officer is suing you, but yet he's out of his jurisdiction. Or, or the county, which one? All of them. Okay. Because they're gonna say that. Um, what state you in? Alabama. All right. That's it. They're gonna say that you violated the um laws of Alabama. So Alabama. Okay. And what city are you in? Montgomery. All right. Then the city of Montgomery. <laughs> um, what was the agency? Was it the police, sheriff, or state highway patrol? Who stopped you? Sheriff. All right. The sheriff office. And who was the person named? Uh, officers, I uh, uh, it's, it's uh, Flowers. All right. Uh, uh, flowers. All right. There you go. All four of them. Okay. Okay. And if you got his badge number, put it on there too. Okay.
Okay, thank you. All right. I will tell you how to um do a lean on them, but I, I ain't gonna do all that. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this info. All right, public lawful notice of the law, venue, and jurisdiction in the um of this security agreement is to ratify, finalize, sign, and seal private contracts freely entered into by better and secure party as registered here herewith. This security agreement is contractual, co contractually complete herein or herewith and cannot be abrogated, um, altered or amended in whole or part without express written consent of both debtor and secure party. The secure party signs, signing, signed by accommodation for the debtor when necessary. All right, because Alpha Bay is the authorized representative for Benjamin Franklin. All right, let's put that. In every manner where the debtor's signature is required, the secure party reserves the right to make suffi um, sufficient claims to secure such indebtedness until satisfied in whole. The secure party or creditor with standing and capacity agrees to issue and extend credit on behalf of the debtor, whether or not such credit is, is drawn upon or not reimbursed in the event of difficulties in collection thereof. Debtors is the commercial transmit utility. See, we keep saying it, transmit utility. I know that they told you, Brother Yakub, that that wasn't real, but it is. All right. And unincorporated. Um, preparatory trademark of the secure party with the debtor's name being common law copywritten and all property of debtor is the secure property now of the secure party creditor. Any unauthorized use of debtor or debtor's name in any manner that might influence affect pertain to or be um, presumed to pertain to the secure party in any manner is expressly prohibited without the written consent of the secure party. So that means um, you trying to talk to me in my name in all caps uh, uh, um, is fine. However, um, you better get written permission from me from Mustafa Bay. And then if you're trying to talk to me as Mustafa Bey, that is strictly expressly prohibited without my consent, all right? So debtor declares that it is an illegious legal entity recognized as such and has rights and privileges recognized under the laws of the United States Incorporation and has been case since its creation in birth year, of course, um, 1789 through 1791 of its final ratification. All legal means to protect the security interests being established by this agreement will be used by the secure party whenever necessary in all support needed by the secure party to protect his, her security interests in the collateral herein identified otherwise, and it will be provided by the secure party, including, but not limited by commercial tort lien process by agreement of the debtor. So it speaks of the lien process. All right. I spoke of that just a, a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, in which that I spoke about how to lean. Well, if you have the officer's batch number, you can actually lean them on the UCC one financing statement. If you have the name, the batch number, and I can tell you what they did here in North Carolina because we was doing it. Um, the more is here. And what happened was is that the judge told them that it would be wise if they take all their property out of their name and put it in their wife's name. Because they was getting lean bad here, so much, so bad, till there was two um, officers um, who tried to um, put out a little program concerning, from out of Greensboro area, to put out a program concerning um, um, those who was um, doing the right to travel and so forth and so on. 
Um, they was trying to mix the Moors in with the so-called sovereign citizens. Of course, there's no such thing. That's an oxymoron. And only a moron would even state something like that. Because you can't be a citizen, which means subject, and then be a sovereign, which means master at the same time. You're the master subject, huh? <laughs> so for them to okay. even so for them to even use the term sovereign citizen and allow for them to utilize that in that manner, they was it's ridiculous. And anyway, the European can only be titled sovereign here. He is not sovereign here on stolen land. Okay? That's just what it is. Sorry. When they said that they came from Europe, when they came from England, they came from Brit, uh, what they call Britain or UK, uh, when they said that they came from Ireland or they came from Scotland or they came from Germany or they came from uh, France or they came from Spain or they came, wherever the case that they claim that they came from is over there. We are saying that we are the uh, Aboriginal, the original Aboriginal people or the indigenous aboriginal people of North America, Central America, South America, and the adjoining islands, the Western Hemisphere. And not saying that we did not come from Africa, we're saying that it was so long ago over so many various impacts and Based on what we was taught by Prophet Nobu Ali in chapter 47, we already came from out of the interior of Africa when all the land masses were together before there was the name called America, when the Greeks referred to it as Pangaea, when all the continents were together. So it wasn't just one land mass called Africa. It was when all the land masses were together. So therefore, there were no names for it except for the Greek name that we refer to it as Pangaea. Right? The Oriental name is Asia. Hence, everyone on the planet is an Asian. We are Asiatics. The Europeans are called Caucasian, Caucasus Asians, Caucasus Asians. And then you have the Orientals who are Asians. So everyone on the planet Earth is an Asian. All right? So let's let's make that clear, right? The debtors declare it in the English legal entity recognized as such and has rights and privileges recognized under the laws of the United States Incorporation and been the case since its creation in birth year. All legal means to protect the securities has been established by this agreement will be used by the security um, secure party whenever necessary and all support needed by the secure party to protect his or her security interests in the collateral herein identified and otherwise added will be provided by the secure party, including but not limited by commercial tort lien process by agreement of the debtor. So right there, keep saying again, um, or I say again, um, study tort, study torts, study the torts, all right? Study the lien process, all right? Execution of the security agreement incorporated a promise to the debtor will direct the ex execution of such commercial form, including but not limited to financial statements such as, such as may be necessary to assure that the secure party's interest is perfected and protected. This security interest established by this agreement will continue until the secure party is relieved of all liability associated herein to the debtor. Until all owing and due consideration to the debtor to the secure party has been delivered, regardless of whether the collateral identified in this agreement is in the possession of the debtor or the secure party. So, all right, the debtor's warrants aimed against the collateral is enforceable according to the terms and conditions expressed herein and according to all equitable laws propagated. Amir. Right now I got him on um 
on um on mute. Yeah, on mute. Okay. All right. So, um, debt is also warning that is um held goods and marketable title to the collateral, free and clear of all actual and lawful liens and encumbrance encumbrance, ex um except for the interest established therein, and established for the substantial a substantial interest and may be privately established by agreements of the parties with attention to the elements necessary to establish a vital a a violated um valid contract under international contract law it has to be valid all right valid contract under international contract law all right your nationality is a valid contract under international contract law. Public incumbency present to or belonging to the debtor shall remain secondary to disagreement unless registered prior to the registration of the secure party interest in the same collateral as in well established in international commerce law. All right? So you want to make sure that your information is protected and perfected as stated earlier, all right? So you have the possession of collateral provisions, and I'm just gonna read this first part. Collateral evidence of collateral may remain in the possession of the debtor to be kept at the address given in disagreement by the debtor or other place approved by a secure party and notice of change in location may be made to the secure party within 10 days of such relocation as if you're gonna relocate yourself. <laughs> you have the proceeds and products for collateral. I, um, secure party or proceeds and products for this um, disposition of the collateral for whatever reason shall be held in trust for a secure party and shall not be commingled in with any other accounts or funds without the consent of the secure party. Maintenance of collateral. Debtors agree to maintain all tangible collateral in good condition and repair and not to commit or permit damage to or destruction of the collateral or any part of the collateral, right? Compliance with the law. Debtor shall comply properly with all laws, ordinance, regulations, authorities, equitable to the production, um, disposition, or use of the collateral. Debtor agree pay all equitable taxes, assessments, and liens upon the Okay, <laughs> got that uncooked pizza. This is the rawness for the realness. All right, that's which is very real. delicious. Yeah, yeah, which is very delicious. All right, so I'm gonna have to be leaving y'all in a few moments. All right, before I can get to it. All right, <laughs> we got this. We got the we got the raw pizza. All right, strictly raw up in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like old dirty B. Like old dirty B up in his pits. <laughs> Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. I get raw. All right, so right here. In the event the debtor, right, so right here, it says debtor agrees to pay all equitable taxes and assessments and liens upon the collateral when due, provided that such taxes, assessments, and liens are proved proved to be superior to the lawful claim established by disagreement and subsequently perfected by the secure party by appropriate registration. So let me say this, it can't be perfected because the individual name is in all caps and they're using the same name in up and low case. So therefore it can't be perfected. Sorry, it's not perfected. It's on the path to be, but because they didn't consider their nationality to be of any importance, they steal property. So and once again, yes, property can't own property. <laughs> once again, Brother L, read for me, idem senen. 
Eden Right. Eden Sanan. Right. Eden Sanan. Okay. Right. Read for me that one more time. Okay. And did anybody find the 1040 NR yet to read? Did they do, have you found it or they don't have it? It's, it's okay. Non-resident alien income tax return. Uh-huh. Uh, so you may need to file a 1040 NR if you were a non-resident alien engaged in a trade or business in the U.S. Hold on, that was just the start of it. Okay. I'm trying to pull it up, it don't matter. It don't want to come up. I guess that's all I can get with it. Well, that's that's good right there. Okay. All right. So only if you was doing business, commerce, in the United States Corporation, would you have to file taxes? All right, do a 1040 NR. All right, you found Idam Sanam yet, Brother L? I haven't, I haven't found it yet. Okay. It's uh, 240 NR is, is specifically talking about trade with the United States of America, Inc., correct? Right. Okay, gotcha. I know it's in there because I did it before, I read it to you before. Right. I D E M. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I, e. mm -hmm. No, I okay. D E M. Mm -hmm. S O N A N. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at wrong. Okay. I'm looking at the E. At, uh, right. I'm a little way off. I got a quick question, not to go back real quick, though. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Say my life has been suspended for a long, long time. Right. So it's, so it's probably, probably outdated. So once I discharge that debt, to go reapply for one and then send that, those papers in to uh, give it back voluntarily? In order to get their surrenderance letter, yes. Right, okay, all right. Cool. Thinking, get, going and getting the, my license would be better than just uh, doing it the way that I'm trying to do it? In order to have the surrenderance letter, that would be the best thing. The surrenderance letters put you in a database outside of the jurisdiction because it's in the DMV database and that the police only have authority or authorization to, to go after the driver's license. So if you surrender the driver's license in good standing, that means it can't be revoked, it can't be suspended, and it can't be expired. It will have to be in good standing. You can, to me. Right, you can always turn it in and get that surrenderance letter so that it can be updated in their database. So okay. the police, the sheriff, the state highway patrol, you know, unless you have injured someone and unless you have damaged property, all right, there's no crime that has been committed. Right. All right. So, Sheriff versus Cullen states that for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Right. All right. So, in the database, that's the only way in which that the police would be, be able to have any um, reason to even, in that regard, it would be if there was some type of injury that you have caused or some type of property damage. Other than that, they will have to write you a warning ticket. Okay. Because you would be put on the do not detain list. All right. 
I got you. So that would, uh, uh, I, I could save myself some, some well, that'd be two, that'd be a lot of letters there. Well, you still have to send off the letters anyway, because you still have to put everybody on notice that you have surrendered and you can show that surrender is proof of that letter. Yeah, I, I, won't, yeah, I won't have to send off two though. <laughs> right, okay, got you, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I would do it the way you suggest. Okay. Hold up. Is I I D E M? Someone please help on um, Brother L. Is I D E M S O N A N? Now I'm literally in the wrong area. Okay. I D E M. Right. I D D E M. I D E M. Mm. Item. Or item. Sanen. Okay. I know what to look at now. Okay. Okay, I am right, and, and, and this is the I reason. Am, hold on, brother. Uh, hold on, hold on. And this is the reason why you can't be the debtor and the secure party with the same name at the same time on a UCC one financing statement, which is the grantor and the grantee, is because it is. Read, brother. L. Okay, I am sounding the same or alike, Bingo. having the same sound. All right, so. Benjamin Freedom Franklin is the same Benjamin Freedom Franklin. <laughs> Whether it's in okay, all the caps yeah. or if it's in low and uppercase, you still property. This is why you need to do nationality, why you must have a common law name correction, why you must have a status correction. Stop letting these um, fools out here following um, these Albions with this. Um, Sovereign citizen nonsense. This is what they're talking about. Because you're not doing it properly. Continue on, Brother L. Okay, it says a term applied to names which are substantially the same. Okay, there it is. Now, is not Benjamin Franklin, Freedom Franklin, the same as Benjamin Freedom Franklin? Thank you. All right. So is it the same, though slightly varied in the spelling as Lawrence and Lawrence and the like? Mm -hmm. Said so to two names, uh, two names are said to be idem, uh, synonyms. If the uh, attentive here finds a uh, difficulty in distinguishing them when pronounced uh, if common and long continued usage has as by corruption or uh, abbreviation made them identical and right the rule of the idea right you know it is this Pretty much what you're saying, Ali. Exactly. <laughs> so this is the problem, yeah. right? So um, um, next class and get some more in, and uh, until we can finish this on out with this information. All right. Um, I'm gonna say eha te wash to each to everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I have. I need to get back on your life. You know, um, I was reading some of the affidavit of ownership. Isn't that supposed to pertain to my legislative? It can. But you can use it. Use it. Use it. Um, in any shape, form, or fashion, but yes, it specifically pertained to um, the birth certificate. But of course, you can't um, do the affidavit of ownership or the birth certificate until you have the birth certificate authenticated. It's authenticated already. All right, then that's perfect. Then that's what you need. Okay, because um, when I was sending an email, I didn't seem like it pertained to the birth certificate at all. 
you can write the information in the way you need to. That's just a sample. This is just like the book that we're reading and going over right now. These are samples. You don't have to be specifically the exact same way. It's, these are samples. So you can um you can add the information the way in which that you need to it, in which that is necessary. You add in your information. You you know what took place. You know what took place with you. You know you was in the situation, and that's the information you put in there. All right. If you're talking about children, then they are your biological children. Can see such and such date. And these uh, misnomers, which is the social security number and birth certificate, in particular birth certificate, in which that was made, that actually made them wars to the state, is revoked. Okay. And they hereby now, and they hereby now, have the indigenous appellations along with their live claim birth baptismal records, which is from your nation. Okay. So, so yeah, I my right. So, um, so that means that that means now you need to do an exec you need to do an executor and executrice letter then. In your executive in your executrice letter, which I can send you a copy, or I think I already sent you a copy of the executrice, executrice yeah. letter. Okay. Yeah. In the executrice letter, you will state that the same information that we just went over, that the child is biologically yours, and that um is not a war to the state, and the child um under your authority now sits at the helm or at the office of this state and is the executor or you um, or now, quote unquote, the executrice of that estate. So my son, or me, my child, was in the office of the state? No, not the state. East state. Okay. No. East state. It's E, right, E S T A T E, right, E state of the E state. So, yes, because the E state is what made you civilist more twos, which means dead in the eyes of the law. When they did a birth certificate and the name was in all caps, they did not put the word E state behind the name in all caps. But by them making the name in all caps means that by proper grammar, they made you dead in the eyes of the law. How we know this is because the word civilis mortus means dead in the eyes of the law. In particular, what law? Civil law. And how we also know this is that you can go to, you can, matter of fact, you go to the graveyard. And the name of everybody's tombstone there who once lived and now is dead is in all caps. <laughs> Just like the name. On the birth certificate. Okay, because I never also read in the certificate. They, they get a fraudulent. Uh, exactly. So that means that you have. Exactly, and that means now you have to make the child. You have to. You have to become the executrix of that estate of that child's estate, so you can protect the child, and that they have no authority whatsoever. So you have to, now that the um, birth certificate has been authenticated, you take that identification process along with your estate letter information as the executrice of that estate because that child is biologically yours and not the state's. That child is no longer a war to the state because you now, that child under your behest of you getting those documents authenticated is now protected. 
and that state is protected. And if they want to do any business, then they will have to have written consent. And you will have to send them a form 56 and a fiduciary appointment letter if they want to do business, if they claim to be the trustees. You need to do a, you fire all the trustees, all those posing as trustees. That's any judge in that county, that's any officer or agent or affiliate or subdivision. Officer. Agents, affiliates, Agents. or subdivisions. You fire all acting trustees. So you have to do a revoking or revocation of attorney. And you fire all the uh, um, trustees who claim that they have any authority to handle this matter or this case. That includes lawyers, attorneys, esquires. Because right now, the child is their collateral, is their debt. And they have, and they've been, and that child has been made a war to the state. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I even had a home birth, and they still uh, try to, uh, right, like they had jurisdiction. Yeah, so, because okay, so, um, okay, now do I need to do this uh, UCC process? First or no? But I, I mean, I did do one. After, after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you, if you, did you do it the way in which that we talked about, or you did it as property? Like right. Jessica, Jessica, right. Jessica, Jessica Williams, in, right. Jessica Williams in all caps, and then Jessica Williams in up in lowercase isn't suffice. Is not a suffice UCC one statement. Did you do it like that? Okay. All right. Yeah. E email it to me before I can see. Okay. Okay. All right. So can I email the document to you? Yes, that's fine. So just call the number? Yes, or either the 910 number. Mm -hmm. 364-9099 or 252. 257-94. 257-9460, yup. Okay, the first one you said, Two five two oh nine one zero three six four three six four nine zero nine nine. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, um, to everyone, I got to watch to each, and we'll be back. All right, and we'll be back Monday. Peace. Peace. Goodbye. All right. And to everyone out here, you know, we love you. Give us a call if you got some issues. All right. Um, we offer advice, of course, if you can put forth a donation, that would be considerate um, because it takes up a lot of time. But yo, we're here to help. Don't get that twisted. We've been doing this for over 25 years. All right, I was 19 when I started dropping knowledge. All right, 19 in front of people lecturing. All right, I'm 48 now, so that's almost been 30 years. All right, almost 30 years. So that has to be respected. And yo, like I said, we love you. Peace.